Today we will discuss one important topic of fungi that is asexual reproduction in fungi. So let's start. In case of uh, reproduction, fungi reproduces by means of vegetative reproduction, asexual reproduction and by sexual reproduction. So sexually, asexually or even vegetatively. So firstly, we'll discuss about vegetative reproduction. In case of vegetative reproduction, any plant part can give rise to a new fungus thalli. So, कोई भी जो plant body part है, thallus का part है, either by accidental breakdown or by death and decay of that thallus, even one small portion of that thallus can give rise to the new thallus. So, first method of vegetative reproduction is fragmentation. So, mycelium breaks into pieces, small pieces, either accidentally or through by some external agencies. Or, the broken fragments hai, wo fragment can uh, be a full-fledged full -fledged thallus. So, in case of mucor, mucor is a uh, fungus that is fragmentation. Se, हर एक जो फ्रेगमेंट है इसका आफ्टर ब्रेकडाउन कैन गिव राइज टू द न्यू म्यूकर थलाय सो ईच फ्रेगमेंट हैज कैपेसिटी टू फॉर्म फुल फ्लैश थैलस इट आल्सो अकर्स बाय डेथ और डीके ऑफ द थैलस जो ओल्डर थैलस पार्ट है वो ब्रेकडाउन हो जाता है और जो उसका स्मॉल पोर्शन है दैट कैन गिव राइज टू द न्यू थैलस फॉर एग्जांपल इन केस ऑफ राइजोपस म्यूकर Aspergillus penicillium. So these are some examples which shows uh, this vegetative reproduction by the method of fragmentation. The next process is budding. So budding is a sort of outgrowth from the main thallus, and that outgrowth gets uh, separated from the parent body and act as a full-fledged plant body. So in case of yeast, uh, this method is uh, present in case of yeast, that is budding. So in case the daughter bud appears from the parent cell, a small outgrowth will appear from this main parental cell and that, parent, that piece gets detached from this parental body and it will act as a full-fledged new individual or new cell. So in this case we can see here, in this picture we can see here. So, <coughs> this is the normal plant body. It will give rise to small outgrowth, and this outgrowth gets separated from this main plant body. Under one condition, when they put this each cell in nutrient medium, so it uh, it shows budding very quickly, and this these small birds gives an appearance of beads on a string, and uh, it will form a thread-like structure, which gives the appearance of mycelia. And this mycelia is commonly known as pseudomycelium. And now later on, this each cell gets separated from this chain. So after getting the normal size of bud, this bud breaks off. When it's thrown in sugar solution, this bird, these birds, like in this picture, we can see here, this they fails to separate from each other, and this structure is known as pseudomycelium. So this is the method which is shown by this uh, yeast, that is Saccharomyces cerevisiae. The next method is with the formation of oidia. These oidias are small mycelial fragments which are slightly circular in shape and they also have capacity to give rise to this fungal filament or fungal hyphae and finally mycelium and give rise to full flesh fungal thallus. So these are rounded oval structures having thin walls and uh, how they are formed? formed so small hyphae they undergo fragmentation and produces yeast like small cells which are known as oidia so these structures have capabilities to give rise to new thalli so we can see here in this picture uh, this is the filament of uh, we can say mycelium or hypha of this uh, fungus and this hypha gets broken down into small pieces and these small pieces which are having thin walls and they are known as oidia 
and each oidia has capacity to give rise to new uh, fungal hypha and finally they will convert it into a full-fledged fungal thallus and this oidium germinate to produce the new mycelium and they will give rise to the new thallus of the fungi the next structures are sclerotia these structures are formed under tough environmental conditions when conditions are not favorable under those conditions these structures are formed so it's a compact mass of pseudo parenchymatous mycelium uh, it's a compact mass which is dark in color and they are formed during unfavorable conditions and act as the perinating structures which helps to prevent these tough harsh conditions and uh, on upcoming of the favorable season they will give rise to the new plant body new fungal body so they germinate when conditions become favorable and this is the most common method of vegetative reproduction in case of claviceps purpurea and botrytis etc so in this picture we can see here this is the picture of sclerotia these are the dark color structures and they are give, they give rise to these small fungal bodies on the upcoming of favorable conditions so claviceps purpurea produces one disease that is known as ergot of ray so in this picture we can see here this black color structure is the uh, sclerotia and this structure can give rise to the new fungal uh, thallus under uh, favorable conditions when conditions become favorable and these are produced under harsh conditions the next structure is rhizomorphs rhizomorphs are again cord like or thread like structures uh, and these uh, are formed by the parallel hyphae and their main function is in absorption and transfer of nutrient medium from the substratum so these are very resistant structures and have capacity to form new thalli they are resistant structure again they are formed under uh, tough or severe environmental conditions then they are found in case of basidiomycetes this is the most advanced class of fungi and may occur in some other fungi also and these are thread-like cord-like structures formed by parallel hyphae and they make the body of fungus their main function of rhizomorph is absorption and transportation of nutrients from the substratum just substratum pe koi bhi fungi grow kar raha hai wahan se nutrition ko absorb aur transport karne mein rhizomorph help karte so in this picture we can see here so this structure the dark color structure is a rhizomorph and helps in absorption and transportation of this nutrient medium from the substratum and the next method is fission it involves the division of vegetative cell into two cells it occurs in case of yeast and each cell will behave as the independent cell it occurs mostly in fission yeast so in this picture we can see here this is the picture the vegetative cell divides by transport septum into two cells they get separated from each other and each cell will behave as an independent uh, cell of yeast so it occurs in case of fungi and the cell divides in transverse plane and forms two cells daughter cells and each cell will behave as the independent cell then asexual reproduction it occurs by various structures it involves only one parent and each offspring is the clone of its parents parent so arthrospore uh, or oidia so these are the structures uh, which are found in the hyphae at the distal end rounds off and separate in a basic petal succession in case of this arrangement the oldest lies at the top and the youngest is at the base that is from apex toward the base of hyphae so oldest is at the apex and the youngest is at the distal end right so this type of arrangement is known as basic petal succession so in this picture we can see here so this is vegetative hypha and these small structures which are thin walled structures uh, which are known as arthrospore arthro means jointed so they, they show some sort of joints in between these spores that's why these are known as arthrospores and they are also known as oidia on germination the arthrospore gives rise to new fungal colony the next are chlamydospores these are the thick walls resting spores which are produced under some, some uh, harsh
harsh environmental conditions. So this picture we can see here in case of fusarium, which is a fungus, chlamydospores are formed. So these structures, these uh, are terminal in the position, and it is they are produced on a stalk-like structure. And they are thick-walled. So these are thick-walled, resistant spores formed over adverse environmental conditions. When conditions are not favorable, under those conditions, these tough spores are produced. And they are formed by the formation of thick wall around the cell. They have thick wall around them, which helps in protection from the harsh environmental condition. And these are detached from the hyphae when the rest of hyphae die. When this hypha gets disintegrated, then they are released from this hypha and these spores remain viable for uh, longer durations on upcoming of favorable conditions they will germinate and give rise to the new fungal hyphae next are sporangiospores sporangiospores are the spores which are produced inside some special sac like structure which are known as sporangia so spores formed internally inside a sac like structure pouch like structure which is known as sporangia that we have already discussed in lower plants and the structure sporangia are produced on some stalk like structure which are known as sporangio spores and the spore produced inside this sporangia are known as sporangio spores the, sp the sporangio spores may be flagellated or non-flagellated it means they may be zoo spores or they may be la plano spores we can say and the flagellated spores are also known as zoo spores and non flagellatory spores are also known as aplanospores so this is the special structure the sac like structure which is known as sporangia and inside this sporangia the spores are produced and this stalk like structure is known as sporangiophore this is known as sporangiophore and it will give rise to these sporangiospores which may be motile or non motile these are non motile spores and they will germinate to that will give rise to the new vegetative hyphae and they will give rise to this stalk like structure which is known as sporangiophore and this at the top of at the tip of this sporangiophore it will be here the sporangia and this sporangia will give rise to the spores and they will get liberated from this sporangia uh, spore sporangia and germinate to give rise to the vegetative hypha so it is uh, found in case of rhizopus as these are produced inside sporangia so that's why they are known as sporangiospores or endospores these are also known as endospores the flagellated spores which are maybe unicellular or maybe they may be uniflagellate means having single flagella or biflagellate these are known as zoo spores also and are formed mostly in case of aquatic or amphibious fungi so fungi which grows in water shows uh, produces these type of motile spores then the non flagellated spores are known as aplanospores and they are produced by some terrestrial fungi and they are uh, carried from one place to another with the help of wind or some other agencies The next are conidia. Conidia are again the spores, but they are produced externally in opposite. They are just opposite to that of uh, sporangiospores. So we can say these are also known as exospores. They are produced on some special structures which are known as conidia, and they are produced on again some special structure which are known as conidiophores. So conidia are formed externally. That is just opposite to that of sporangiospores at the tip of or sides of specialized hyphae which are known as conidiophores so those hypha which bear this conidia are commonly known as conidiophores this picture we can see here so this structure is known as conidiophore and it will bear some special branches at the tip of these branches there will be a conidia and these conidia will produce conidiospores or conidia so these conidia will act as a spores. These conidia spores are specialized non-motile asexual spores. They don't have any sort of flagella. So they are aplanospores and produced exogenously, opposite to that of 
uh, sporangia spores on the conidia fours these stalk like structure which is known as conidia four so on this conidia four they are produced at the tip they may be produced singly or in chains for example in case of deuteriomycetes and in case of some excomycetes and basidiomycetes that we'll discuss later on so these special rounded structures are known as conidio conidia and this structure which bears them these are known as conidio 4 and they are produced in bicipital manner that is oldest at the apex and youngest at the base so this is all about today's discussion if you have any queries any questions you can ask in the comment section thank you have a great day